What are these journal accounts for? They all have different functions and usabilities. A debtor's journal, for instance, what do we include in a debtor's journal? A debtor's journal is an account where we write all of our credit sales. That's what I'm going to outline. It's credit sales. A customer who comes and buys goods on credit will be written in the debtor's journal. And then we move on to the creditor's journal. Creditor's journal is when we, as the business, go to someone else and buy on credit. So these are credit purchases. We will have our own creditor's journal where we keep track of all of our credit purchases. And then we move on to the debtor's allowances journal. An allowance journal for the debtors. It's a debtors journal, but we're looking at their allowances. What the allowances say is that a person who came to buy on credit is returning stock, so it's for returns, is returning certain stock back to me. Now they don't have that liability to pay for those goods because they've returned it. It's with me now. So now we're going to write a debtors allowances journal and we have to decrease their liability. So a debtor's allowances journal also affects your debtor's journal because then you have to decrease your liability of your customer. And then we go back to the creditors, it's the same. Allowances, we're looking at returns. What does it do? Where we, as the credit, as the people who bought on credit, the credit purchases, you get the goods and you find out that it's not satisfactory. You can return the goods back to your creditor. And what a creditor's allowances journal does, it also affects our creditor's journal. Now, because the goods are no longer with us, we don't have the obligation to pay for those goods. Now we have to reduce our liability that we owe to our creditor. So our creditor's allowance journal also affects our creditor's journal.